Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. This week, we are presenting The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, a classic story adapted by Daniel Hines. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is a Halloween story. While there's no violence to speak of, it may still be too spooky for some of our younger listeners. So if that's something you're worried about, have a listen before you play it for your kids. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow Once upon a time, there was a strange little village in a faraway forest. It was separated from the rest of civilization by woods and streams and mountains and miles and miles of lonely country road. It was a quiet and dreamy sort of place, nearly always shrouded with the soupy gray fog that rolled down from the mountains and kept in almost constant twilight by the thick green canopy of ancient evergreen trees. In fact, it was such a quiet and dreamy place that everyone who lived there grew to call it Sleepy Hollow. That being said, the night our story takes place was the least sleepy night that the village had seen in years. The daughter of the town's lord, a great beauty by the name of Katrina Van Tassel, was holding a Halloween ball, and everyone was invited. The town was buzzing with excitement, and none more than Ichabod Crane and Abe Brom Bones. They stood together, reading the invitation posted on the board of the general store. Side by side, they made quite the odd pair. Ichabod was tall and thin, with heavy, owlish glasses and a pinched, smug expression on his face. Brom was nearly as tall, but much broader, with rough features and a working man's scarred hands. Boy, said Brom Bones, that Katrina sure is a beauty, and smart as a whip, too. She'd make one fine wife. Ichabod glanced at Brom with a smirk and pushed his glasses back up his slender, hooked nose. Quite right, said Ichabod. But I wouldn't think too much on her if I were you, good fellow. An educated gentlewoman like Miss Van Tassel surely wouldn't be interested in a stone cutter. I'm sure she would much prefer the company of an educated man of quiet refinement. He adjusted his spotless suit coat. Oh, I suppose you're talking about yourself, said Brom, rolling his eyes. Now that you mention it, I would be a perfect match for the girl. After all, I am the schoolteacher, a lettered man of good birth, and the smartest man in all of Sleepy Hollow. And I'm some kind of dummy, just because I work with my hands? You saying I'm not good enough? Ichabod gave a thin smile that practically dripped with hate. Oh no, you're good enough. For some farmer's daughter, perhaps. But I'll warn you, Brom, tonight I will win the hand of Miss Van Tassel, and you'd be wise not to get in my way. Brom curled his hands into fists, so mad he thought he might pop, but somehow he managed to get himself under control. Knocking the lanky schoolteacher into the mud would probably feel good, but it wouldn't win him the affection of Katrina Van Tassel. The school bell rang and Ichabod turned and walked back into the building, calling out to his students as he went. The schoolteacher thought he was better than everyone in town. Someone needed to teach him a little humility, and Brom was starting to think that he was just the man for the job. That night, Brom rode his inky black plow horse down the dark and wooded road, towards the Van Tassel estate. The towering evergreens reached high into the sky and brushed each other above the road, branches rustling in a menacing tone and blocking out all but the occasional flicker of moonlight. Cursed night said Brom, slipping from the saddle and guiding his horse to the side of the road. Better light the lantern before I ride into a tree. From his saddlebag, he pulled an old iron oil lamp and set it on the ground. He pulled out his flint and steel to get the flame going, but stopped as he heard a voice drifting down the road, accompanied by the steady clop-clop of a well-shod horse. It was Ichabod, Brom realized after a moment, recognizing the voice. Great. Just great. He pulled back a little ways into the trees, hoping the cocky teacher would ride on by and avoid any more unpleasant conversation. As Brom waited among the pines for Ichabod to pass, he realized the teacher was singing. His voice was a high and shaky soprano. 
I'm scared of goblins, sneaks, and spooks, hymns and witches, nuts and kooks. I'm scared the devil's fire roasts, but most of all, I'm scared of ghosts. Yes, most of all, I'm scared of ghosts. I'm scared of benches, shades, and souls, haunts and specters, orcs and gnolls. I'm scared the devil's fire roasts, but most of all, I'm scared of ghosts. Yes, most of all, I'm scared of ghosts. From his hiding spot in the trees, Brom had to cover his mouth to keep from laughing. Everyone knew ghosts weren't real, but here was Ichabod, the self-proclaimed smartest man in town afraid of superstitious nonsense. The skinny teacher wouldn't be so smug if Katrina Van Tassel knew about it, that's for sure. After Ichabod passed, Brom lit his lantern and got back on his horse. As he rode up to the Halloween ball, an idea began to take form. He smiled. But most of all, he's scared of ghosts? But most of all, he's scared of ghosts! The party was beyond extravagant. The Lord Van Tassel had spared no expense, and under the expert eye of his daughter Katrina, the ballroom had been transformed into a beautiful Halloween display. Paper lanterns in black and orange floated above the dance floor, where people moved in the slow and stately style of the time, each dance a routine of intricate steps. Along one wall were tables and pumpkins and knives and candles, and already guests were setting to work, carving jack-o'-lanterns and putting them on display. On the main stage, a quartet of musicians dressed as skeletons played lute and harp and fiddle and drum, filling the hall with a beautiful music. More beautiful still, at least to Brahms' eyes, was Katrina Van Tassel herself. She was red-faced and laughing from her last dance, stunning in a gown of pumpkin orange with black lace along the fringes. My lady, said Brahm as he approached her. He took her small hand in his and kissed the back of it. You're more lovely than ever. Halloween suits you. Katrina flashed him a smile. Why, Mr. Bones, who knew you were such a sweet talker? Brahm laughed. I hide it well. No one much wants a well-spoken stonecutter, so mostly I let my hands do the talking. Katrina favored him with another smile. Well, I wouldn't say no one. I've always admired a man who can work with his hands, who can build and shape. That's how my father started out as a carpenter, and he grew rich enough to become Lord of the Hollow. Brahm smiled back. It was going better than he could have hoped. Until Ichabod wandered over. Sweet talk from a stonecutter is like milk from a mutt. Fit for mongrels, perhaps, but you deserve better, my darling, the teacher said, bowing low to kiss the back of Katrina's hand. Now, Miss Van Tassel, I must tell you about the latest publication I've received from Boston. Very sophisticated stuff. He led her away into the crowd, leaving Brom angry and alone. Katrina gave him an apologetic look over her shoulder, but that only made him feel worse. Something had to be done. A short while later, Brom spied Ichabod and Katrina together at the side of the hall. Ichabod was looming over the poor girl, ranting on and on about himself and not letting her get a word in. When she looked past the pompous teacher and caught Brom's eye, she mouthed a silent, Help me! Brom was more than willing. He walked over and took the spot next to Ichabod, who immediately started talking down to him. Now, Brom, carving a pumpkin isn't like hauling stone. It takes a deft touch and a patient mind. Nothing you'd be interested in. Brom grabbed a knife and, picturing Ichabod's smug smile, began to hack into his pumpkin more savagely than was strictly necessary. Did that pumpkin personally insult you, Mr. Bones, or is it gourds of all kinds that make you angry? Asked Katrina with a little smile. Brom flushed and handled the knife a little easier. As I was saying, said Ichabod, turning his back on Brom to address Katrina again, your father's land holds many a rich history. In fact, did you know that during the Revolutionary War there was a battle not a mile from this very home? Katrina rolled her eyes, but Brom was hit with a sudden burst of inspiration. He coughed to get the attention of Ichabod and Katrina, and then said, Of course she knows that. Everyone does. That's why we have to be careful of the headless horseman. As he said it, he caught Katrina's eye and gave her a sly wink. It may have been his imagination, but Brom thought she winked back. 
a headless horseman. Nonsense, said Ichabod. Behind them, the skeleton band had moved into an upbeat tune. The crowd paired off and began to dance hand in hand. Not nonsense, said Brahm, pulling a handful of pumpkin guts out of his jack-o'-lantern and splattering them into a barrel. He slipped into song, fitting the words to the music of the band. People from nearby tables drifted over to listen until a small crowd had gathered. In war for freedom, land and God, with powder, musket, and ramrod, the British soldiers came to play, and the fields ran red as coats that day. Hear the headless horseman's call, oh, that's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. That's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. What does that have to do with the headless horseman? Well, uh, cat? A captain from this very town, for battle dressed in rebel brown, swore to fight until his end, and then came back to fight again. Hear the headless horseman's call, oh, that's the legend of Sleepy Hollow, that's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Still not seeing the connection. Well, uh, Brom? On a stallion black as gallows day, the captain charged into the fray, but a British saber sharp as dread took the captain's noble head. Hear the headless horseman's call, oh, that's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. That's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. So he was a horseman who lost his head? That's it? Cat? Since that war each lonely night, the captain's ghost all full of spite, headless rides down wooded way to find the head he lost that day. Hear the headless horseman's call, oh, that's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. That's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. That's not true. And that's not all, Brom. Careful if you ride alone, or sleepy hollows cobblestone, or if the horseman's anger roars, for his missing head he may take yours. Ichabod jumped and gave a startled squeak, pale and shaky with fear. You, sir, are a liar and a cretin! Ichabod snarled. You're not fit to be in such company. With that, the lanky schoolteacher turned and marched away into the crowd to regain his composure. The crowd laughed. Several others who had been the victim of Ichabod's lectures even patted Brahm on the back and bowed to Katrina. Finally, though, they faded off and left Brahm alone with the most beautiful girl at the ball. You're a quick thinker, Mr. Bones, Katrina said with a playful smile. For a stonecutter? And you have the voice of an angel and a remarkable imagination for a lord's daughter. She smiled and laid a hand on his arm. Brom felt a tug of guilt. Is it terrible we did that to him? Katrina laughed. You're not terrible, but maybe I am. He's to be my husband, after all. Brom couldn't have been more shocked if the headless horseman himself had come galloping through the hall. You're going to marry that? That him? Katrina sighed. It wasn't my idea. He convinced my father earlier tonight, and father says I have to. Ichabod being a schoolteacher and all, it's a respectable match. But not the match you want? No, but the daughters of lords rarely get what they want, at least where marriage is concerned. They carved their pumpkins in silence for a moment. If you could have what you want, what would it be? Katrina blushed. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a gifted stonecutter? A sweet talker? Someone who would sing with me, who would make up clever stories and scare all the Ichabods away? Hmm, said Brahm. That's a tall order. I don't know where you'd find someone as great as all that. Alas, said Katrina, pressing her hand to her forehead. Then I fear I'm doomed to marry the most Ichabod of all the Ichabods. Behind them, the band slipped into a slow waltz. Feeling bold, Brahm extended his arm. Maybe before you are Ichabodded, 
I could have a dance. I thought you'd never ask. They took to the floor, but it was only a few seconds before Brom was roughly tapped on the shoulder. He turned to see the schoolteacher glaring at him. May I cut in? he asked. Without waiting for an answer, Ichabod grabbed Katrina and began pulling her away. He paused just long enough to whisper in Brom's ear. Smartest man in town, and once her fool of a father dies, the richest too. Maybe I'll pay you to build his crypt, if you're lucky. That was all Brom could take. To be beaten was one thing, but Ichabod was clearly more interested in Van Tassel's money than Katrina herself. With a grimace, Brom spun, snatched up his jack-o'-lantern in his big, rough hands, and left the hall. More than ever, Brom knew he had to do something about Ichabod. For cat's sake. It was a few hours later when the skinny teacher mounted his horse and started back to his home in the village. All in all, he was feeling very pleased with himself. He had convinced Lord Van Tassel to grant him his daughter's hand, and he had kept that brute Brom from interfering. Truly, he was the smartest man in Sleepy Hollow. He rode down the dark road, his lantern held high. The woods were very quiet, and that made Ichabod nervous. Of course, if they were loud, that would have made him nervous too. It was stupid Brahm's fault, with his silly ghost stories. Ichabod told himself that ghosts weren't real, but he couldn't help it. He was afraid. He began to sing in his shaky voice. I'm scared of goblin sneaks and spooks, hymns and witches, nuts and kooks. I'm scared the devil's fire roasts, but most of all, I'm scared of ghosts. Yes, most of all, I'm scared of ghosts. The fog was thick tonight, thicker than usual. It hung over the ground like a blanket, obscuring everything and making it so his lantern lit no more than a bare few feet in front of him. That being the case, Ichabod was almost happy when he smelled the stagnant swamp that meant he was halfway back to the village. A slender, cobblestone bridge stretched across the black water and he started to cross, his horse's hooves clip-clopping loudly and echoing strangely through the night. Fog did strange things to sound. Why, it almost sounded like there was another horse on the bridge. But that was impossible. Ichabod was alone. He had the road to himself. Still, he glanced over his shoulder, just to ease his worried mind. And there, at the far end of the bridge behind him, was a man on a horse. Ichabod yelped, but quickly got himself back under control. It must have just been another party guest, leaving late and lost in the fog. "'You there! Who are you?' he called. "'It's Ichabod Crane here!' The figure started forward his inky black horse moving like a wraith through the swampy fog. I said who goes there? The figure continued to come closer and closer and closer. For a moment, Ichabod thought that the rider was carrying a lamp of his own, but then he realized that it was the rider's eyes that were glowing. They were blazing forth like flames from a head that was in no way attached to the rest of his body. Shaking and quaking with fear, Ichabod slowly looked up. The rider was tall and broad and cloaked all in black, and he had no head. No head but the one he carried in his arms. No, oh no, please, said Ichabod, but it was too late. The headless horseman lifted the burning head in one hand, and with the other hand he pointed at the neck of Ichabod Crane. The schoolteacher screamed and spurred his horse. He galloped wildly through the fog, taking turn after turn, losing himself among the trees. His lantern fell from the saddle hook and smashed along the ground. Ichabod looked back at it in time to see the headless horseman leap the puddle of flames in a smooth jump. Ichabod spurred his horse again and again, but the mount was running out of energy. It wasn't used to running. The headless horseman was gaining on them, the hooves of his ghastly mare pounding a ragged rhythm on the forest floor. Ichabod, too scared to think, rode right into a low branch, which knocked him sprawling and breathless to the ground. He blinked up in time to see the headless horseman looming over him. With a terrible slowness, the headless horseman took the head he carried in his hands and set it on his black-wrapped stump. The eyes blazed forth with a terrible, orange flame. Please, please, don't take my head! 
The headless horseman spoke in a rasp. Leave Sleepy Hollow forever. I will, I will. If you come back, this is your fate, the horseman said, and then he took his burning head in both hands and flung it at Ichabod. The schoolteacher screamed and took off running into the woods. He kept on screaming all the way through the night, and that was the last time Ichabod Crane was seen in Sleepy Hollow. After the teacher was gone, the headless horseman began to laugh. He laughed so hard he fell from his horse. He laughed so hard his cloak came undone, and it could be seen that it wasn't a ghost at all, but Brom Bones wrapped in a costume. He rolled back and forth on the ground, holding his stomach and laughing among the broken pieces of jack-o'-lantern he had used as his fake head. But most of all, he's scared of ghosts. But most of all, he's scared of ghosts! The next day, they went out looking for old Ichabod, but nothing was ever found. A month later, he was forgotten. The town had moved on, and the new news was much more cheerful. There was to be a wedding between Katrina Van Tassel and the stonecutter, one Abe Brom Bones. The End Thanks for listening! 